and oh yeah and I play that because um, I saw Brian Ferry live at the Royal Albert Hall just before all this lockdown kicked off um, yeah I saw him on I think it was like the 10th of March or 11th of March or something and then uh, here we are five and a half weeks on I haven't really left the house since but it was good um, he's in his 70s now and yet he's still uh, he still sounds as good as he did back then and as smart he's always he's always been one of them blokes who's been able to um, <clears throat> wear a suit you know what I mean and he doesn't look awkward in it Oh, which is something I've never been able to do. I just can't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to me. But I, do you know, like when you balance something on a cat, and it doesn't like it, it no. Do you know, you just put like a little bit of a shoelace on its head or something. It holds itself odd, and it just doesn't quite understand what's going on. I'm like that when I wear a suit. I just feel. I just. I just hold myself oddly. But uh, and it's funny actually because Suzanne's been talking to. An old mate of hers who she went to um, uni with. That's what's that's what that's, that's what's been going on on it really. I suppose people have more time on their hands to catch up with people when normally they're busy and all that. But the last time Suzanne saw her, I think, was at a wedding, like seventeen years ago. And a memory of me at that wedding is um, I was the only bloke wearing combat pants to a wedding. So I've, I've I've never been able to wear a suit. I'd rather look odd and stand out wearing something comfortable than trying to fit in and not being comfortable. It's pointless. Um, so I thought I'd just uh, play a couple of songs. Also give you a couple of rock busters. Because it's something to uh, kill a bit of time. I did I did some a couple of weeks ago. You like them. So so here we go. If you remember Rockbusters, I'll give you some um, initials and a cryptic clue. You let me know who the artist is from the clue that I give you. You don't win anything. It's just it's just a bit of fun. So the first one, the initials are AG. That's AG. And the clue is, how would you describe Kermit? All right. I mean, you might describe Kermit in loads of different ways, but what's one of the ways you might describe Kermit to someone? You know, out of the Muppet Show. So the initials AG there, right? Uh, the second one, uh, the initial is M, and uh, of the artist of the band. And the clue is, I might phone you, I might not. All right? I might phone you. I might not. All right. And then the last one, initials DL. DL. And the cryptic clue is the the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people who's um you know who's got that disease whose arms and legs fall off. All right. Who is it? Band of the artist, the initials DL, and the cryptic clue is uh, the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people with the disease whose arms and legs fall off. Right, there's a bit of working out for you to do there. Kill a bit of time, and um, and I thought I'd play this. Um, it's been stuck in my head. I've been whistling it for a few days, driving. Uh, Suzanne up the wall. It's Judy Teen by Steve Harley. Um, don't know why they've got to be from Mars. I can't imagine spiders from Mars being any more weirder than um, spiders from Earth, to be honest. They're just odd, aren't they? How do you make them weirder? Um, I've been I've been going to YouTube a lot during the um, the lockdown. And there's two things I go to if I'm not actually looking for anything, you know, in particular. Um, there's big waves, right? You know, you, you get like uh, fishermen or those blokes who are shifting freight 
out in the North Sea. And they do videos of the waves that are outside during bad weather. And it's mental. It's like 50-foot waves. And they're just... Um, it just doesn't bother them at all. You can hear them chatting to each other, arguing over a game of cards. Meanwhile, outside, there's waves like, you know, the end of that film, Deep Impact. And it just doesn't bother them. Yet, yeah, it, it sort of... It freaks me. It freaks me well out to know that waves are that big and are bashing about on the same planet that I'm sat on. So there's that um, I like looking at, and spiders. And they sort of terrify me, but at the same time, I like looking at them. And I think the thing that freaks me out is the legs. Because sometimes a spider can be quite big, you know, the body. But I can I can pick things up like beetles and stuff like that that have the same size body. But it's them legs. Just big... It's the big legs that... Fr- Which is weird because, you know, one of the things that can make a woman sort of attractive is long legs. And it doesn't... Don't freak you out. Um, I knew maybe it would if a woman had eight legs. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it wouldn't be... I don't know. But anyway, yeah, just, just Google... Um, the Goliath spider, will you? Look at the size of that. There's one on the internet. Just, uh, I think it's the first image that comes up. It's sat in a frisbee and its feet are hanging over the edge. It's got kneecaps. Uh, have a look at it. I mean, obviously don't if, you, if you're one of them people who uh, doesn't like spiders and you can't even look at them, then don't. But it is mental. Um, right, the other day I did some rock busters. I thought I'd just um, give you the answers. The first one... The initials were AG. The clue was, how would you... Uh, what did I say? I said, I said, uh, what's one of the ways you'd describe Kermit, right? How does Kermit look? He's, he's green, isn't he? He's all green. Kermit's all green. All green. Al green. Al green is the answer. Um, like I say, it's a little bit cryptic. You have to, you have to think about it. Um, so well done if you got that one. Second one, the initial was M. The clue was, I might phone you, I might not. So what's going on there? What's another word for for calling someone? Bell you, right? You might bell someone. I might bell you later. So if you might phone them, you might not. You may, you may bell them. Mabel, Mabel, Mabel. That's Mabel, um, who's out at the minute. It's Nina Cherry's kid, that, isn't it? That's when you know you're getting old, isn't it? When pop stars you listen to as a kid have had kids and they're, they're now pop stars. Madness. So, yeah, Mabel for the second one. And then the last one was DL. Uh, the clue was the Australian asked the Impressionist to do one of those people who's... Um, arms and legs fall off so what are they called they're called uh, lepers aren't they lepers if you're Australian you'd probably say lipper so the impressionist has asked the person to do uh, do one of them people so they're asking them to, to do a lipper do a lepper do a lipper a few of you got that no problems uh, so well done something to do on it and um might do some more, especially if this lockdown carries on. So, uh, well done. Time for another tune. Thought I'd play this. It's quite apt. Mamas and the Papas, California Dreaming. Good sound, innit? And there's a weird thing with um, Mama Cass, one of the one of the band members. She died in the same room. As uh, Keith Moon out the Who, there's a flat in Mayfair, or it might have been the other way round. Did he die? And then she died. I don't know, but they died in the same room, which is sort of weird. But then you think people are dying all the time, and you know there's only so many places you can die. So I suppose it's going to happen now and again, isn't it? Anyway, how's it going? Uh, lockdowns still sort of on, isn't it? When you can nip out. Bit of a wonder, but it's not normal yet, is it? So that's why I thought I'd still play you a couple of tunes. 
have a quick chat. Not doing rock busters today. Um, having a break from that. But uh, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook. Suddenly got like a load of messages coming in at the same time about one topic. And when that happens, you sort of go, this this, this is it. Like Richard Branson, that's what he says. He says he gets loads of posts, loads of phone calls, and he hasn't got time to go through them all. So he waits until the message gets to him or something. It's like, if it's important, you'll eventually find out. Anyway, I can't, I can't look at every message you get on Facebook. But suddenly, there was the same message from loads of different people. So I thought, right, this, this must be important. What is it? And I clicked on it, and it was a bit of monkey news. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I'll play it here so you can see it. It's this. This little monkey comes round the corner on a motorbike. He grabs the kid, runs off. And everybody was like going, this is terrible. What is going on? There's a monkey kidnapping a kid. But I don't know if I can turn the audio up so you can hear it. But if you hear it when it first comes round the corner, to me that sounds like a siren. And I'm wondering, I don't know where this is, it's sort of Asia or something like that. I'm wondering if this is how they're dealing with the lockdown. Like I say, if you play it back from the beginning, right, you're hearing a siren there. That bike's got some sort of siren on it, like, and that bike is a proper little motorbike, that. A monkey-sized motorbike. So I'm wondering whether in Asia, to deal with the amount of people ignoring lockdown, They've got monkeys doing the doing the rounds and making sure people stay in. And I think that's what's gone on here. He's come tearing around that corner there, down this alleyway, and he's found this family who should be at home, should be behind doors, and they're not. They're fanning about in an alleyway. And the way he's... Ang- I mean, the, the way he comes tearing down, it's like he's caught these before. He's annoyed with them. He's livid. I mean, he's, he's probably gone for the kid because he knows that if he texts the kid, the adults will follow. Um, the way he just like gets off his bike again like how many times have I told you I mean a little motorbike's a, a, a giveaway that's a monkey sized moped that, that it's been issued with little monkey law enforcers I suppose it's good because you're not going to argue with it because it can't speak English or, or wherever this is so it's just going to go in and try and do the job shift the people and I think that's what's uh, I think that's, that's what's gone on here um, but you see I see things like that and I think hang on is that starting to creep in here as well? Because all this talk about loads of PPE kit, it's like they, they've got loads of it now. There's like a mask, a face mask, a thing they wear on their head, a thing all over the body. And it makes you wonder if uh, in our hospitals we've got little, you know, little monkeys walking about the wards helping out and you've no idea because they've got that much PPE on. You, you can't see the little chimps out under there. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, helps help. And uh, I suppose... Uh, you know, when times are bad, everyone's got a um, everyone's got a chimp in. You could say. Anyway, monkey news. There you go. I've always been a fan of a a song with a good story, and that's that's up there for me. Um, if you don't know it, it's a story about a bloke who um, he must be married with his girlfriend or whatever. Goes off to war, comes back. And his uh, his legs are all done in. The relationship goes a bit downhill. She starts leaving him at home. She's going out getting rat assed every night. He's fed up, and he wants to. Um, I think by the end of it, he wants to do her in. He's had enough. Um, just a good example, really, of uh, of how things can change. At some point. Their relationship was all rosy, and then it's uh, it all changes. I mean, we're all being tested at the minute, aren't we? Really, with this uh, virus thing going around, stuck at home with your partner. Um, I've been all right. We've had the odd day. Me and Suzanne had an argument the other day about who had the biggest head. I don't want to go into full details, but uh, of who had the bigger head. But it got to the point of getting out a tape measure and measuring the circumference. And um, it just all happened because I ordered a cap 
that stated that one size fits all, and it 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 fucking doesn't. I just wish I'd sort that out because now I've got to fanny about and send it back. One size fits all. Noise me. But then again, I suppose that's what life's about, innit? Getting annoyed, being happy, being worried. Oh, that's a lot, innit? Being scared. Um, that's living. I do like a good moan. And I do like a worry, in a way, for a little bit. It's a bit of a pastime, keeps your brain active. I always remember um, a few years back, I used to think about death a lot. You know, we all sort of come into the world in the same way, don't we? But the way you go out, you don't know. You don't know what your um, exit strategy is uh, is going to be. And I'd, uh, I'd let that worry me. What's going to happen? Is it just going to be in my sleep? Or is it going to be something horrible? Um, it would mainly happen when I could hear a clock ticking. It was a little reminder that time was just, you know, ticking away. And that's my life. And, uh, yeah, it used to bother me. And then I read a story that made me change my mind. And it was about a bloke. And he, um, he died in his bed when a cow fell through the roof, through the ceiling, landed on him and, and, you know, squashed him dead. And um, for a bit, I was like, oh, God, that's really bad. That's that's probably going to be me, that. I have something horrible like that. And But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, it's not, it's not actually that bad. It's not like, um, you know, an illness that drags on and on and you're getting weaker and you're just miserable and you're sat there just... You know, waking up every day thinking, oh, I'm still here. How long is this going to go on? It just happened quick. And, uh, and even even to the point of, even if he heard that cow coming through the ceiling, I don't think he would have had any, any worry. Because I bet, I bet his brain was telling him he was still asleep. And it was a dream. Because why would a cow be coming through the ceiling? So it sort of made me realise that it's the people who were left behind who um, is more upsetting for, isn't it? I mean, it's the wife, isn't it, who has to deal with the with the upset of losing her husband, and um, and on top of that, she's got like a, a hole in a roof that she's got to sort out. She's got to get a tile around. She's got to have the, the sort of loft rebuilt. Get a, get a plasterer in to sort out the ceiling. There's a lot of hassle there. And even before all that, getting a cow out of the bedroom, because that would have been wandering around, wouldn't it? And that's that's not an easy task, shifting one of them, especially if it was upstairs. If it was upstairs in the bedroom, they don't go downstairs, do they, um, cows? There's something about the legs. I think they can go upstairs, but they can't walk down. So all that hassle, he's, he's no idea. He's gone by this point. She's got all this shit to deal with. And that's... Um, it was after reading that story that I realised that, you know, it's pointless worrying about when and where you're going to die because you, you'll never know. But all I did was I moved the worry. I've talked before about the worry hole and you've got a, a space in your head that you've got to fill with worry. So I went from worrying about how I was going to die and where I was going to die um, to just worrying that Suzanne will die before me, which I wouldn't want. Because at the end of the day, death is is more of a bore, like for the people who are left behind. Which uh, will definitely be the case for Suzanne, because she's got to try and find a coffin that will fit my big fat head in it. So that will serve her right for taking the piss. A little bit of karma, right? Um. I wanted to talk about UFOs today, and I haven't. I've sort of ping-ponged around a bit there. Maybe do it next time. This is a little bit linked to how I started thinking about it. 
I saw it on some BBC documentary the other night, and it's Curtis Mayfield, and they were saying how uh, he was doing a gig in America, and the the lighting rig fell on him, and um, he, he was paralysed from the neck down. So there you go. You see, you never know. DJ Shadow, with uh, this time I'm going to try things my way, and the story is that the um, the vocal of that was just found in in some building on a, like a bit of old tape, and no one knows much about it. I think all they know is that the um, some fella called Joe. I think the name Joe was written on the tape. But other than that, they don't know anything about it. Bit of a mystery. Which I thought was a nice way to sort of chat about another mystery. The mystery of UFOs. I've sort of been watching quite a bit of footage on the internet of uh, UFOs recently. I think it's just a a good escape, innit? You know, everything's a bit sort of shit at the minute, innit? No matter where you're living, no matter what country you're in... Everything just seems a little bit shitty. Um, so sort of looking at otherworldly stuff is uh, is just a, a good escape. And there's loads of footage out there. Some of it you kind of go, oh, that looks good. Some of it is, is a joke. I mean, there was one that I clicked on. That was a, a bloke that was, it was clearly off his tits because he was filming something out of his bedroom window. He was going, there's a bright light. Oh, look, I can't believe it. I'm being visited. There's a bright light. And it was, it was clearly a street light. Um, so there's a lot of lot of knobheads like that, but now and again, you get some footage or hear an interview or something that you go, well, this confirms it for me. Um, like you know, there's other stuff out there, and it was um, it was a bit of a chat that Joe Rogan was having. You know, the Joe Rogan podcast. He was chatting to some commander who um, was flying about in a like a you know. A, fighter jet and um, and he was whizzing about enjoying himself um, turns his head and sees this UFO just floating about above the water and he was like what's that and now this fella's seen loads of stuff if there was new technology out there that we don't know about he probably would know about it but he saw this thing and he was like I, I don't know what that is and he started ping-ponging about all over the shop. Um, he said it was shaped like a tic-tac, and it moved about like nothing he's ever seen move about before. It was like going left, right, up, down, fa- and at high speed as well. It just didn't make sense to him. Right? Um, they got some radar footage of it. I'll just show you that. This was it here. It was like moving along at high speed, and it was just turning at the same time, which is a bit odd. But um, who knows what it was. But I've had a a theory for a while. (coughs) Octopus. If you look at them, they look a bit alien-ish, don't they? This UFO was floating above the sea. So there's a connection there already. Um, All the arms, which, you know, would probably come in handy. If If you're flying about something that that commander saw... I imagine that's got a lot of joysticks, a lot of buttons to press. You need a lot of arms. So there's that. And I saw this video ages ago. I'll show you this Mimic Octopus. Now the skill that it's got is like... um, Let me just show you this. So this diver here, there he is in the water... Swimming along, minding his own business, doing a bit of filming, not much to see really. And he just sees this little bit of seaweed, thinks nothing of it. There's a little fish, little black and white fish. Oh, that's nice, there's not much else here. I'll, I'll just film that black and white fish there, moving about. And there, Oh, good Jesus, what is that? An alien. That is an alien there. Um, let's just rewind it again. It goes from that, just looking like a blob of moss... To that, that is amazing, and off it shoots. Look, going back to planet Zonk, and think about it. It makes sense, doesn't it? If you were an alien, 
where would you land? You wouldn't bother landing on land, on Earth. Because it's, it's not going to be left empty for long, is it? Is it you're going to find a little plot, you'll go, this is all right. And before you know it, bulldozers will turn up and you know build a new Starbucks or something. So they're better off going into the sea. And there's more of it. The, the Earth's 70% water. So if you're going to sort of base yourself anywhere, you're better off in the water. Especially at the minute, it seems like one of the safest places now, doesn't it? I don't think the uh, I don't think they get the virus underwater. And I tell you another thing that makes me think that I, that I'm right here. If you Google big big octopus, what comes up is the Pacific octopus, right? Where was where was this uh, Tic Tac UFO spotted? Over the Pacific. Makes you think, doesn't it? Could be wrong, I could be right, which uh, sets us up nicely for this next song. Bit of public 